Hi, I'm Steve Henry, I'm the CSIRO Research Officer and we work on a suite of projects that are part of an investment from the GRDC that are aimed at minimising the impact that mice have on farming systems and providing that information in the lead up to sowing this winter crop is really important given there are so many mice through northern and central New South Wales and we're now getting reports of higher numbers as we move uh, right through the southern part of the cropping zone. Mice are in the system all of the time but just at numbers that aren't detectable and so when conditions get favourable for mice all of these small little undetectable populations start breeding and get bigger and bigger and bigger until they all join up. Now with zero no-till cropping systems there's lots and lots of food in these areas so those populations get to really high levels and then start to overflow into other paddocks and into rural communities. It's important to talk about the most appropriate way to deal with them when they get to such high numbers and so in, in townships and rural communities it's really important to only use those baits and traps that you can buy from your local hardware stores specifically for use around houses and dwellings. So they're the anticoagulant baits that we're you know, quite familiar with and it's really important if you've got mice around your houses and you're dealing with them using baits to remove any of the dead and sick and weak ones because any other animal that's eating those mice that have been poisoned by those anticoagulant baits has a chance of what we call secondary poisoning. Conversely, for farmers that are using zinc phosphide, it's very important for them to use it at the label rate, which is one kilogram per hectare. But it's also good to know that mice that are killed by zinc phosphide, the, the phosphine gets basically used up in, in the act of poisoning the mouse, and the chances of secondary poisoning from those critters is actually quite low. And one of the key messages we're getting to farmers is that they need to get out of their utes and go for a walk in these paddocks, determine how many mice they are, and then be prepared to bait them as they sow the crop. Baiting straight off the back of the cedar is by far and away the best way to get a good result because as they sow the crop they bury a lot of the residual food that's in the paddock and then if they've got the bait spread straight out onto that freshly turned over soil when the mice break out of their burrows after the crop sown the zinc phosphide's the first thing the mice will find on the surface. We know from work that we've done in the lab that if mice get what we call a sublethal dose of zinc phosphide so they eat a portion of a grain that has zinc phosphide on it, then they stop eating that straight away. So it's important to leave a bit of time between baiting efforts to give them time to forget about that belly ache that they've got from eating a sublethal dose and be prepared to eat the bait again. We've been trying to encourage farmers, if they have livestock in their, in their farming system, to use sheep to graze stubbles to remove all of, as much food as possible. And of course, as they would normally do every time they get a rain event and a lot of this residual food that's in paddocks germinates, farmers need to get in and spray those germinations out to help remove that food. Now, I've been getting a lot of inquiry about farmers saying, well, if I burn my stubble, that'll get rid of the mice, won't it? Well, we don't think that that is the case because mice are now, instead of living at the margins of paddocks and invading paddocks when times are favorable, in zero and no-till systems, they now live out in the paddocks and they build burrow networks in a similar way to rabbits building warren networks. Um, and these, these burrows are, are often 30 to 50 centimetres deep. So a stubble fire isn't going to impact mice that are down in burrows. But what it will do is take away a lot of the shelter that's available for mice and that will affect the way they behave. So potentially a way to get quite good control or good uptake of the bait would be to spread the bait after you've burnt the stubble if a stubble fire was part of your normal management strategy. We wouldn't advocate burning stubbles to get rid of mice because we just don't think it will have that effect. So apply the bait at sowing because we know that most of the damage happens in the first 24 to 48 hours after the crop is sown and then continue to monitor the crop through, throughout the entire growing season just to make sure that you've actually got a good result.